May I speak in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Today, or possibly not today, depending on where you're watch it, when you're watching this video, is the Feast of Christ the King, which is a relatively new festival in keeping with the Church of England. Perhaps only about 20 years we've been keeping this festival. It's a little bit older in the traditions of other churches, it's been going for just under 100 years now, which still makes it quite modern in a 2,000 year history of our faith. The feast came into being in those dark years between the First and Second World Wars, when the lead fascist leaders were on the up in Europe. The Church started this feast as a way of offering an alternative, an alternative to the destructive leadership they saw around in Europe at that time, offering a different model, a more Christ-like way of leading, reminding us that Christ as our ultimate leader is important. What seems less clear to me is what Christian leadership might look like. At one level, I don't really think there could ever really be a one-size-fits-all approach. There must be a diversity of views. And if we look at scriptures and the tradition of the church, there's been all sorts of leaders who've led in all sorts of ways. Some, ba some good, some bad, some mixed. Most mixed, I suspect. So, I don't think there is one version of Christian leadership. But let's leave that caveat to one side and let's look at our reading from Ezekiel and see what sort of picture of Christian leadership that might look towards. Our reading from Ezekiel today embraces the popular biblical image of the leader as a shepherd, following on from a great tradition which started with David the shepherd boy, the younger son who was uh, tending the sheep and almost forgotten, who goes on to become a mighty warrior to defeat Goliath, to lead the people of Israel to victory in battle. He goes on to be a great king, to build a temple, and to be seen as the, one of the greatest kings that Israel ever saw. Of course, a king who doesn't always get it right, as incidents with Bathsheba, amongst others, show. Even the great and perfect king doesn't get it right all the time. That image of shepherd would have resonated to the original listeners to Ezekiel. The people of Israel were people who kept sheep. It was part of what it meant to be an Israelite is to look after flocks, as your forefathers Abraham and Jacob had done before. Even if you didn't keep sheep, you probably knew somebody pretty well who did keep them. It was part of their life and witness, part of their context. Most of us are a bit more remote from sheep keeping these days, uh, or other livestock even for that matter. Some of us may hold on to some traces of an agricultural past, uh, which might help us to understand a little bit better. Fortunately for our purposes, I don't really think you need to know anything about animal husbandry in order to take some messages away from this text and to understand what the prophet is getting at. So if we take in the metaphor of the pa passage that the shepherd is the leader and the sheep represent the people that are being led. The leader is responsible for making sure that the people that have all they need to flourish. For the sheep in our passage, that is access to the good feeding ground, to the rich pastures, but also feeding on the mountains, making good use of all the land that is available. The shepherd is also responsible for ensuring a good water supply. And perhaps more importantly, the shepherd's also important for searching out for the sheep which have been lost, binding up the injured, and ensuring that the weak are strengthened and not weakened by the greed of the strong. It is a picture of a leader who uses the resources at their hands to ensure the flourishing of all the people. A leader who has special care for those who are most weak and vulnerable. So what might that look like in the life of the church today? To be shepherd-like leaders. We hope to offer some sort of nourishment to the members of our flock through the preaching and various study groups that we encourage. We provide and encourage spaces to be nourished by the clear waters of prayer, in prayer groups, morning offices and Compline amongst others. We try to search out the lost, to notice when people seem to disappear from amongst us to look after those who need binding up who are injured, those who are grief-stricken, those who are not well. 
Of course, we as Christian leaders don't scratch every itch and occasionally we miss things and there's areas we could do better in. Fortunately, we have sheep who can speak to us and respond and can tell us when there's things missing. What are those things we could do to be more caring, to be better at feeding our flock, to be better at tending our flock? What's missing from our teaching programme and what's missing from our prayer opportunities? It'd be really good if our talking sheep were to tell us uh, how we could do our job better. Though perhaps we should also think about what this model of leadership might mean for the world. What might it mean for our political leaders and how should they be acting? What would it be like if our political leaders thought about those who'd elected them? and perhaps most importantly those who hadn't voted for them, in the same way that the shepherd looks after his sheep. How are they going to help the people who, the electorate and those people under them, to flourish? How will they ensure that uh, people have opportunities to access those things which should enable them to flourish? Opportunities to access education, healthcare, career opportunities housing and all all those other things that are necessary for our human flourishing. What can our leaders do to help us to do that? And also, perhaps importantly, how do our political leaders stop the strong sheep from taking away the little that our weak sheep have? Of course, in many ways, this is too simplistic. No one leadership style can confront all the complex web of decisions that our political leaders need to make these days. For my hope and prayer that whatever style of leadership is being embraced, it is a leadership style that embraces the tender care of the shepherd, the one who cares for the weak and ensures thereby that we can all flourish together. Amen.